I am Dr. Dinesh Burane, Director Hematology and Bone Marrow Transplant in Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute, Delhi. I am going to speak about treatment of transplant eligible patients in myeloma. Patients with myeloma should be distinguished from patients with AMGUS and smoldering myeloma who do not need therapy. Patients should be uh, risk stratified into three groups of high risk, intermediate risk and inter standard risk based on cytogenetics, uh, fish analysis, LDH and presence of uh, uh, plasma cells in peripheral blood. Following diagnosis and risk stratification, all patients need to be assessed to determine eligibility for autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. There are three phases of therapy, induction therapy, consolidation with autologous transplant and maintenance therapy. I am going to take you through all these three phases. What are the goals of induction therapy? The goals are high response rate, rapid response, depth of response, achieving at least a VGPR should be the goal of, ther goal of therapy. Improve performance status and quality of life and the therapy should not limit uh, peripheral stem cell mobilization. There are various uh, treatment options for induction therapy that usually includes a triple drug therapy with the proteasome inhibitors. Uh, there is evidence uh, VTD is uh, better than cyborg D uh, in efficacy. RVD has not been compared with the other triple therapies. Uh, the newer drugs with a triple therapy are making the way to the upfront initial therapy uh, very soon. Standard and intermediate risk myeloma, use of induction therapy for four, two to four months followed by autologous transplant rather than either conventional chemotherapy alone. Patient should proceed with his first transplant after recovery from stem cell collection. That means he should undergo early transplant rather than delaying the transplant. High risk myeloma, they do poorly with all conventional treatment options. My suggestion would be to administration of proteasome inhibitor based induction regimen targeting complete response as a treatment goal, then proceed to stem cell collection and transplant. All patients with high risk myeloma should be offered bortezomib as a maintenance therapy. Complementary therapy is a part of a myeloma therapy. Patients with one or more lesions on skeletal radiograph and those with osteopenia should be given bisphosphonate therapy, which significantly reduces the number of skeletal events. Pneumococcal and influenza vaccine should be given to all patients. Patients with the myeloma frequently develop complications related to their disease that includes hypercalcemia, renal insufficiency, infections and skeletal lesions which require a specific treatments in addition to the therapy directed to reduce the malignant clone. Maintenance in myeloma has shown a peripheral, uh, the PFS advantage. The two of the three linalidomide maintenance trials have shown a OS improvements, but that's on the expense of toxicity. That includes myelosuppression, the risk of secondary pri second primary malignancy, and quality of life. It is unclear whether the all patients benefit from the maintenance therapy, and it is not clear which agent and how long the therapy maintenance therapy should continue. In summary, the prognosis of myeloma has significantly improved in the last decade. Induction, consolidation with transplant followed by maintenance is a standard for majority of the patients up to 65 to 70 years of age. Combination of drugs for induction therapy is likely to change with the arrival of newer drugs. Complementary therapy is a part of myeloma management. Thank you.